Okay, well, it's great to be back with you. And I would love to share some ideas with you again. Now, I'm not sure if you were with me on my earlier session, but what I'd like to share with you now are some thoughts on how to take your journey of business success along a pathway, if I can just drive the technology, of a thousand miles, one step at a time. So, a journey of a thousand miles is an analogy that really simply says it's not about a thousand miles. It's not about the distance. All of us tend to think of our journey as, oh, it's overwhelming. It's too far. It's too long. It's too difficult. The Chinese proverb says it starts with one step. And if we focus our mind only on one step, we can always take one step. Now, it might mean that there's several thousand steps, but can we manage one step? Yes, we can. Therefore, a thousand miles we can manage. Therefore, there is no reason to feel overwhelmed, to feel just not good enough or inadequate or it can't. The simple truth is you can do one step so you can add your steps together and therefore you can take your thousand mile journey toward the success that you have identified for yourself so look my name is ben kench and i'm passionate about coaching people and helping you in your small business journey and in life you know at the end of the day journeys in business are only a part of a greater journey in what we call life and so it is my honour and privilege to be here for you and to share with you. Today, though, as it is a business thought that we're focusing on, and it is my wish to help you and to give you ideas and just maybe one seed that we can plant that makes you have a different aspect in your future or a different thought in your process tomorrow. So your business Let's see if we can grow it. Here are a few simple steps that I know if you take them one at a time and only move on to the next one when you've done this one, you will and can get your thousand mile journey. So the first one, the first core question, this is in everything. This is your business, this is everything. It has to be a reason why. There is a brilliant thought leader, author called Simon Sinek. Now, many years ago now, he wrote, start with why. I've always been a fan of starting with why. I realised after I'd read his book that it was the way I'd always done things because I, I just always did what I wanted. Now, I am. I, I, don't know about you. I don't know you at all, but I'm offering to get to know you. But the reason why you're doing this, why you get up in the morning, why you've chosen this profession, why you're still struggling, even though the journey's been hard. Only you know that. But I'm wondering if you know that. Do you know? Well, it might sound obvious. And here's a little sort of watchword if you like because i've been coaching people for a long time now officially 17 or 18 years as the business booster in fact i was right there as a four leader in the growth of coaching as an industry when i started coaching in 2004 people didn't know what coaching was um, except large 52 seat vehicles but when it comes to coaching I know that the basics get overlooked. So I'm here to grow your business and I can drive sales and I've got loads of experience of making you more money. Can we just skip to that bit, please? <laughs> uh, no. You see, if we skip, I know that the foundations aren't built properly. You, you know the analogy, buildings that we're stood in, the foundations hold it up. If they're wobbly or rocky, you're not going to get where you want to be. So this is a key, 
a key, key understanding. You, you, there is no skipping past this. You can at your peril, but I would recommend in this glorious, wonderful, sunny afternoon, get a brew, go outside and be with yourself. Ask that question, why am I here? What am I doing it for? Why do I put up with this? What do I really want? What makes me happy? Where do I get my reward? If you can focus on your rewards, when you get your rewards, why am I doing it? What makes you happy? It really absolutely is fundamental. But your thousand mile journey, your business success, your career recognition, your happiness starts with simple questions that are difficult to answer. And the first one is why? Why am I here? Go and have an afternoon, take a pad and a paper, just let the answers come, but go and ask the question. And now you're in a business and you've set out and you say, well, I know why I'm doing it. I'm off, I'm running. Um, um, who? Who do I sell to? Who's your audience? Now, forgive me, but I'm going to just share with you what I often hear. <clears throat> And that is the thought that anybody really, anybody really, like with a pulse, seriously, I know this is basic. I know you think I'll get on with it. I know you think, oh, I need to get on to how to grow my business. Show me some sales techniques. I know you're thinking, I want the money, my money, get to the money bit. This is the money bit. If you're trying to attract everybody, you're going to just run out of steam and resource before you've got enough. If you're standing up and just trying to say, hey, I do this. Come on over here. Well, you might as well get a market stall, stand in the middle of town and go, oh, roll up, roll up. I mean, seriously, come on. I always share an analogy. I mean, I'm not a golfer, but if I were to go into the golfing business, I have choice A. I could get my stock and I could wander into the middle of a nearby town and I could stand there and go, go on, golf equipment, golf balls, golf clubs, golf bags, I got it all, golf equipment, come over here for golf. <laughs> I might find a golfer in the middle of the town. I might make some sales but really if you were going to sell golfing equipment where would you go yeah a golf club you'd immerse yourself in people that are saying i already like and play golf you'd be aiming for your golfer and your golf fanatic now, just because you sell, I don't know, print or design or technology or websites or financial advice or whatever it is, doesn't mean to say that there isn't an audience that have already put their hand up and said, I like um, websites. I'm interested in automation. I want to improve my technology. I'm sure worried about my finances. Whatever it is, there's an audience there that have already put their hand up, they've aligned to a club, they've joined a group, they're on a mailing list, there's an audience there. I know you know that. But I've been going to network groups and business conferences and sales events for 30 years. And I know that most people I see at most groups I go to and most events, they're just really... Phew, hoping they're just being there in random case that somebody will know somebody now i'm not going to tell you how you should rule your life but if your resources and your energy and your time and your money are potentially limited then make sure that every time bit of time you spend or money you spend or energy you spend make sure it's spent where you get the best chance of return Who's your audience? Where do they go? What do they read? What groups are they in? How do you know? Who else do they buy from? Are there affinity groups? Are there newsletters? Are there joint venture partnerships you could do? I mean, there's lots of ways, but if you keep just doing, I'm going to get out of there, I've got to be busy, get out of there, go to this place, that place, you'll just run out of steam. Who really is your audience? What age? What sex? Where do they gather? 
Where do they read? What else do they buy? Again, you know, a simple analogy. I'm a salesperson. I like speedy things in life. I've got lots of friends who are not in sales and they like slower things in life. They maybe don't like to drive fast. Well, I do. They may be conscious of security and risk and fear and I'm not. But if you're selling something and they're very risk averse and slow, you've got to know how to and find them and deal with them. You wouldn't want to come to me and offer me something slow and steady because it would bore me. If you went to somebody that wants slow and steady with a fast and exciting, it would frighten them. So who's your audience? Where are they? That's the level of digging and thinking that will totally transform your audience going forward. You know what? You do not need a big audience to be very successful. Smash that myth. You do not need a big audience to be very successful. A really good friend of mine and a successful businessman, and I spend a lot of time bouncing ideas around. You know, this man sells recruitment. Ha, what a minefield. How competitive is that? And yet he does extremely well. And his motto is his audience, his business sector, his target group. It's an inch wide, but a mile deep. He sells treasury recruitment roles. I don't even know what they are. He said that to me. And I'm like, Ooh, wrong language for me. I don't know what that is. But there is a world out there of treasury, which is, he says, is an inch wide and a mile deep. Bang on. Always there, fishing a very select pond, always makes money. So what's your example of your perfect niche? Don't go for the mass market. Who really values what you sell? What else do they buy? Where else can you join? Who's your audience? It's boring. It's laborious, but it's a lifesaver. Please. So if you're in business and you've got all these things ahead of you and it's a real challenge and the question of making money always seems to evade you and you just want to skip to the money bit, then um, if you go straight out to an audience without this being prepared, you could be talking completely double Dutch and they won't understand or won't get you. What is it that they want? Now, when a person buys a drill... I don't do DIY. And if you, if you come around here and have a look, there's holes in my wall that shouldn't be there because I tried. Um, another story another day. But, you know, when you buy a drill, what is it you want? Do you want a drill or do you want holes? And in fact, do you want holes or do you want a TV bracket on the wall? You get the picture, don't you? What is it your customer wants? I'll give you another example. I have a client several over the years in software. Now, they come out with all fancy, clever things that their software does. And because they're really into it, they think that everyone else is going to get excited about the same things they do. <laughs> but they're not. And they don't. They just want to know, will it solve their pain on a Friday night? Will it make their bookkeeping easier? Will it make, you know, um, keeping up with all their con contacts and connections easier and smoother did it does it solve a problem create less pain they don't really care about all the fancy gizmos most of the time so my question that i want you to ask about your audience what is it that they really want they don't often want the middle bit that you're selling sorry they don't they want what it does for them I don't care how you hang my TV bracket. I want a bracket to put my TV on the wall. You could put bloody glue or 20 inch bolts. I don't care. Get my TV on the wall. I'm being a bit silly, a bit flippant, putting an illustration that we all get, but I'm going to ask you to go back and ask them, what is it they want? Because too often, a vendor assumes that they wanted their gizmo. They wanted their it. They wanted that car. They wanted that new website. They wanted that new investment. 
they don't really care about any of those. They want the end of that. The car might be about ego. It might be about frugality and worries about money. It might be about reliability because they're scared of getting broken down. It might be about all sorts of things, not the badge on the bonnet. What they buy will always be a problem solved. So you need to tune in, please, to the problems of your audience that you've drilled down into and then start talking about the problem. What they want is crucial. It's not about what you do. And that brings me to the key point of speaking their language. I cannot tell you how often that the language you use will be not understood. But the, if you like, there's a challenge with us. We're Brits and we are, um, shall we say, polite. We don't actually say, excuse me, I didn't understand. You go, oh, right, lovely. And you'll be in presentations. They'll be nodding their heads going, yes, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. <laughs> no, didn't really get that, but I'm not going to say. I'll just smile and nod and you'll be quicker. I don't want to be embarrassed, so I'll let you carry on. How many people that you present to actually fully get it? Do you use your language or theirs? That you know, is so critical. So here's a tip. If you wish, take this, run with it, play with it. Next time you go on a sales presentation or a, a potential sales presentation, whatever you call it in your world, and that's an illustration of language, by the way, I'll come back to that. When you go on a sales presentation or you're showing somebody how you do it or giving a quote, maybe that's how you call it, you know, a, a scope or a survey or whatever it is, record it. Take your smartphone, press record and just listen, because if you've not met them before and you don't know much about them, what they'll be telling you in the words they use, what often happens is the salesperson or the vendor interprets that word and comes back out with the um, translation so they might say yeah I just um, I sort of what I want to do is have all these computers talking so that I can be anywhere on any machine um, because I know that at the moment they don't and the IT person goes all oh, right you want a network right I'll get I'll get a local area network built for you now as silly as it sounds as an example that's the sort of thing that happens every day the customer's words just want them all to talk together, gets in, interpreted and translated. And now the vendor's trying to educate. So, no, no, that what you need, what you mean, you should use these words. We get awfully arrogant when we're selling, don't we? And that might be financial when it comes about investments and the customer says, oh, I just, you know, I just want something to look after my retirement. And the IFA, oh, yes, well, you know, you need a good managed fund. <laughs> really? It's not what I said. And I could go on and on, but you'll see these examples. So my question to you is, when that happens in your world, are you listening to their words? Or are we arrogantly translating and trying to educate them into the correct words? I'm joking a little, but please take the point. Because I promise I sat with thousands and thousands of people over the last 40 years in sales and the last 18 deliberately coaching and the language is always a mismatch and if ever a business isn't succeeding one of the key things is that their audience might be the wrong audience but their audience doesn't understand them they just you know really i don't want to put my hand up and look stupid so i'll just say yes but no your language is not their language. Have a look at what words you use. Have a listen properly to what words they use and feed their words back to them. And I promise if you actually have the courage to stop and stand back and listen to them and change you, you'll have far more success going forward. Because it, I, I promise you it's 70% or more of the time when a sales company or person is just talking about what they know, assuming that the buying person will get it eventually and that's the right way to do it. It isn't. 
So focus always after you've understood why you're doing it and, and what your audience really wants. Change your language so you resonate with them instead of speaking at them. But here's a critical one. If I were to look at your marketing, and I don't know how much of it you do, again, I don't know the world of small business from your eyes, but in the years that I've been working alongside smaller businesses, often they will come to me and say, Ben, I really just want to grow my business. I mean, things are bad, but I want them to be better. And so I start digging in. Okay, tell me how you're feeling. Tell me how long it's been like that. Tell me what you've been doing to help that go away. And tell me about your marketing. And often it isn't very much. And that's because of a fear of losing the money and tried a bit in the past. It didn't seem to work. So now I just don't risk the money and I sort of take what comes. And we do get some things coming in, but we don't go out there. Or we see a lot that's just really pushing constantly. Every meeting, every event, everywhere on, you know, in your face style. We've moved. This is a new way of doing things in the 21st century. It's taken us already 21 years of this century to really embrace the change. But we have so many choices now that actually, if you push and keep at me, you will push me away and lose me. The only way to really seriously develop your business in the next five years is to be attractive. And that often means not doing a lot, but being attractive. So if you push and try harder, you push me away. I tell a story here often. So I'll share it with you because we've got a couple of minutes. But, you know, a few years ago, I was doing a gig in Northern Ireland. I was over there for a couple of uh, events over a few weeks. But one day I went to this beautiful, beautiful bay and I was, uh, you know, wandering along the shore getting some raise and some sanity and there happened to be a dog a small dog and and its owners on the beach and the dog was in the sea swimming and they'd thrown the ball in this little dog was chasing a ball now picture this i stood and watched and actually then after about 15 minutes Everybody was getting a bit scared. This was a young, little, friendly, puppy, playful dog, but it was swimming and getting exhausted. It was in the sea, couldn't get its ball back. It was just, it was going to drown. And we were just watching. It was horrible. And, it, you know, all of us were like, oh, God, please don't come back. Leave the ball, come back. We we're watching it try harder and harder to get the ball. And it, because here's what happens. If you swim and you push, you create a wave. So this dog was pushing, trying hard, creating a wave. The wave was just pushing the ball away and it tried to get near it and tried to get near it. It was just like, you can't do that. If you stop swimming and pushing towards it, the tide, however, brings it in. Thankfully, the dog didn't drown and he got his ball. But I share that with you because I see so many people in business that push and push and push and push away and then run out of energy. And I'm lovingly saying, stand back, attract, find a way to be attractive and let the tide of the universe, the tide of demand, let it come to you. The magical business of attraction is where we need to be when there's thousands out there making a noise. Have a look, have a think, have a try at that. Forgive me, but I thought I'd put a picture of me. <laughs> I mean, this is a little snapshot taken in Greece last year. Shaved my head a bit more to keep the sun. I know, OK, it's not me. I wish he was. I wish I could do that. I mean, what a feat of strength. But I thought it was a good image to illustrate the picture. Balance. Huh. Like heck. So how many hours are you working? Ever work weekends? Ever feel stressed? Do you ever say to yourself, well, yeah, but it'd be all right when I've done this bit? Do you consistently say to yourself, yes, but it'll soon get better? 
Has it been this way for a while? And you're saying, yes, but it's just a phase. I promise you it isn't. I promise you it's because what you're doing, if it hasn't worked, it isn't going to work. If you can have the courage to stop and stand back, we can make it better. But whatever you do, don't burn out. Stop pushing. Get some balance in your life. You're not going to get people at your funeral say, oh, well, it's a good job he kept pushing. He, he nearly made it, bless him. Or well, she was a lovely lady. She was committed to her work. Good on her. You're going to get comments like, oh, why did he try so hard? Why didn't she back off? We missed her. We couldn't have time with him. Get some balance in your life. Money and ego and success, it's just not all it's cracked up to be. However, if you keep pushing for it, you're not going to get it. In this new world that we're walking into, life is precious. Being is important. Balance, absolutely critical. Have some disciplines. I'll help. Shout, I'll help. Know when to start, know when to stop, know how to do it so that you get more out of your time. Ask questions, learn a technique. Again, I'll share a story with you. You know, I'm a passionate motorcyclist. There's a picture of me racing around Donington on my bike a few years ago. But, you know, I was racing around Donington Park and I'd got the same, exact same motorcycle as as the instructor. And the instructor was a guy called Jamie Whittam, super bike rider if you're into bikes. But, you know, same bike, same tyres, same track, same weather, same day. So how come he was like 10 seconds faster than me? Because I'm a good rider. You know what I mean? Because of some techniques he knew that I didn't. And if I hadn't have stopped and watched and asked and questioned and tried, I'd never improve my riding. I'd just keep doing it saying, I'm a good rider, I'm a good rider, I'm a good rider, I'm a good rider. Yeah, but you're 10 seconds behind, Ben. No, I'm a good rider. I, I use the analogy because sometimes we have to stop and ask and follow and copy and learn. But if you haven't got balance in your life, it isn't because you are so different it can't be done. It's because there's some things you're not doing that others can or are. Forgive me. I care. I don't want you to burn out. I don't want you to suffer health wise. Stress is a killer. We're not, we override stress in our head and we say to ourselves, oh, I'm not stressed. And our body suddenly gives us a pain one day. <clears throat> Yeah, and life's too short. Please, please get some balance. And if you find that difficult, ask. I'll share all I can, but there's other people. But find others that seem to have more of what you haven't got and ask. Because just like the 10 seconds a lap with Jamie on my bike, there's a way that maybe is out there that you don't know. So you can have balance. It isn't sacrifice ambition. It isn't sacrifice success. It's just do it a different way. And one of those things that will help you create more balance is when you stop doing all the tasks yourself and create systems. Now, I'll always build sales machines with people in, but sales machines. I build businesses as a machine because there's a synchronicity and a cogs that intermesh we systemize a business we put crms in with good automated mailing we put proper information gathering so the right response is out there we listen to our customers and prospects and we mold and change and then when we've got it right we duplicate it but you've got to systemize otherwise you're always doing one-off emails till the middle of the night you know, sometimes I work with a company in a proposal. Well, every proposal is different, I know. But does it take you two hours, <clears throat> excuse me, two hours to do a proposal? Or does it maybe take you 20 minutes? Because most of it is template driven. So systemize your business, please. Systemize your lead generation. Systemize your lead follow-up. Systemize your email communication, systemize your social media, 
make it so that there is automation where a human element is still present. But if you don't embrace systems, you will not have enough hours in the day to really leverage and get what you want. Building a business isn't hard, but we make it hard. We find excuses, we argue for our limitations, but I promise you, with love, building a business isn't hard if you do it a different way. <laughs> Albert Einstein, what a great man. Now we're talking about technology and we're saying it's not everything. As I said a moment ago, technology is all brilliant if it still has a human element. Einstein said, I fear the day technology will surpass our human interaction. The world will have generation of idiots. We used to have a TV program. Um, it's quite funny, to be fair, but it was like, computer says no. Computer says no. Maybe you remember it. Maybe you've experienced it. But isn't it sad? Don't you think it's sad? We have a generation of people that have been told to do as they're told, not think. So if it isn't on the screen in front of them, they can't do it. You know, I, again, I'll share a story. This is so stupid, but I went over to America a few years ago. I was with my daughter. We stopped at a roadside diner for breakfast. My daughter just wanted um, an egg sandwich. I like egg sandwiches. We made them home. She was familiar, just a fried egg sandwich. Now, I was going to have a breakfast. So I walked into the diner and said, I have a, a breakfast and my daughter just wants a fried egg sandwich, please. Um, excuse me, sir. I don't think we do those. Turned around, asked the chef, said, do we do a fried egg sandwich? Um, no. Sorry, sir, we don't do those. I'm like, okay, okay, so... Can I just ask a question? On the on the breakfast, do you do fried egg? Oh, yes, sir, we do fried eggs. You can have them just how you like them, sir. Fried eggs are special to us. Okay, good. So you do fried eggs? Yes, sir, we do fried eggs. Said, um, on there, the side, the extra menu, says uh, uh, bread and butter. Can I have bread and butter? Oh, yes, absolutely, sir. We we um, can give you two slices, three slices of bread and butter, go with your breakfast, no problem at all, sir. I said, so you can do a fried egg and you do the butter. Can you put them together and make a sandwich? Fried egg sandwich? Um, do we do a fried egg sandwich? No, sir, we can't do a fried egg sandwich. I just gotta believe it. I'm like, what? Computer says no, it's not there as an option. I can't think, I can't do, it's there. We've got a generation of idiots. Now, how is that gonna help us in five, 10 more years of that, where we've got so many systems that people just do what the system does? I can't think. Oh, system's broken, what do I do? I don't know. Come on, let's get humanity back. Let's get talking back. Let's get real back. Let's pick the phone up instead of texting. Let's actually pick the phone up instead of always emailing. Come on. The secret isn't a secret. If you want your business to grow, then one of the critical steps is to be in it, but always to systemize and put you into the system. You can't do everything always yourself one at a time, so you have systems, but you can't just be a machine because there's no human connection. Balance, remember that? <laughs> so please go back, have a look at your business and say, hmm, how often do I pick the phone up or do I actually just email? Could I ring more people or do I hide behind a message? Have I got a system that sends out loads of email or do I actually manage to just put personal messages into them? And on my social media, I mean, when I do a message, do I just post it or do I reply every time? And when I reply every time, do I then get burned out of time? So I do I have to compromise somewhere? Where's the balance? Building your business one step at a time means Today, maybe, or another day when you've done the others, focus on the human connection inside your systems and technology. Otherwise, it'll be empty. But I'm going to bring you back to reality. You say, oh, come on, Ben, I want more money. I say, yes, we'll grow your business, make more money. That bit's easy. Remember, it is easy. It is easy when we get out of the way because there's a process. We know it. It's not rocket science. It's been around a long time. Can we grow your business? Yes. What are you at at the moment? How long have you been at that level? What's changed in the last three years? How many 
customers do you have? How many customers have you lost? How many times do your customers buy? What is the average sale value of each purchase? Do they come back three times a year, five times a year? Or do some of them not come back? How much margin do you make on the things you sell the most of? And how much margin do you sell or make on the other things you don't sell so many of? I could ask you another 20 questions. What's your most efficient lead source? How many leads of those convert? What's your average conversion value? What is the true cost of a sale? What actually are you making bottom line? Do you know your numbers? Really know your numbers? If I've just asked you 10, 15 questions, how many could you answer? If you can't answer them, by the way, you don't need to know in your head, but you need to know. If you can't answer them, there's a problem there. There's a gap there. There's danger there. Now, heaven forbid, because I'll tell you another real story from a client of mine over the years. Now, very often in small businesses, the business owner is trusting of the accounts lady. God bless them. They're beautiful. They're amazing. And 99.99% of the time, they're excellent. They're not crooked. However, I will share with you a true story of a client that had a problem because the abdication of the knowing of numbers meant that the person had too much power, too much control, and as the saying goes, absolute power corrupts. Absolute power corrupted to the extent of embezzlement. If that happened to you, you'd be so inclined to point the finger, it's not fair, they've ripped me off, the bastards, and I'd say yes. But why did you let them? Why didn't you know? Surely you saw a pattern. You must know what your numbers are. Now, I never, ever, ever want you to fear embezzlement. And I want you to always trust and hire the right people. But please don't be blind. Know your numbers. You see, if you've got 10 key metrics in your business and we want to double your, grow your business in a year, we just tweak each one at a time. Your average sale purchase might be from once a year to three times a year. Your average value might go from 1,000 to 1,500. Your you know, referral might go from one referral per customer to three. You might get a lead source that brings you five leads a month, and now you manage to get it eight because you changed some of the titles. There's so many things we can do, but you've got to know where you start from. So please, one of the key steps growing your business is to know your numbers. Have a think about that. Come back to me. I'll help you all I can. And it's easy, this business world. I've told you that several times. But if we build it a right way, it isn't difficult. We make it difficult. But, you know, the key here is to build a system, get it measured, tweak, measure, tweak, measure, get it right. And then magic, rinse and repeat. There's no secret. Just persist, carry on, persist, carry on. But make sure you've done the other steps first. Rinse and repeat when it's right. Don't rinse and repeat when it's just the same old and it's still not making you more money no matter how much more of it you do. There's no secret. Doing more will get you more if the doing is right. So don't skip the early steps and go straight to the end where you think the pot of gold is. The pot of gold isn't at the end. It's really more likely to be at the beginning where you've done the thinking and set it up correctly. You know, the iceberg, we see the top, but it's the bit underneath where all the power is. Your systems, your thinking, your knowing who you sell to, your knowing what they buy, your change of language in your sales pitch and your automation with human in your management. All those things which are below the line invisible, that's what makes you the money. And when you've got all that right, rinse and repeat, persistence, yeah, it comes. So never give up. Ultimately, though, if you do, that's the only time your business fails. You will always have a chance of succeeding if you keep going. You never can fail unless you stop trying. Now, I know sometimes we can feel like you want to stop. We can sometimes feel beaten and battered. But, you know, we don't stop. We keep going with an attitude of 
What can I change? How can I improve? Who can help me? Where do I go? I'm not giving up, but I'm not just going to keep repeating the same stuff. It's not working. But you don't fail. You keep going. And it's all about you. It's all about you because, you know, it's you that can burn out. It's you that can have a breakdown. It's you, me, us as people where we've got limits because we break. We've got people we love. We don't want to lose. But if we don't spend time with them, we lose them. We've got relationships that matter more than money, but we get sucked into the money generation. It's absolute critical. Your business going forwards is about you. And managing you is more important than managing the business. Don't come into work stressed. You're going to burn out the people that are there. And if you say, well, we actually for you say, Ben, but I, I, I'm stressed. I say, OK, deal with your stress, then come into work. Come in happy. When did you last go to the gym? Let's look at your diet. What's your sleep patterns like? Manage you. And when your energy is right, the impact will be changing everybody and everything. Manage you. Start with you. Work on you. Work at your energy. Work at your sleep. Work at your diet. Work at your exercise. Work at what you put into your mind. Don't, don't watch the poison that's TV news. Don't fill yourself full of shit. Turn the TV off or turn the news off and read a good book. Go for a walk instead of filling your mind with dirt. Managing you. You'll get what you deserve either way. If your life isn't going great, well, look at what you're doing with your life. If your life's going great, look at what you've changed. We all get what we deserve. And managing me is always the key. But keep the faith, because if it happened, you know, one of, one of the phrases I'll always share with uh, anybody, when well, I'll share with you now, but, it, you know, things always work out in the end. If it hasn't worked out, it's not the end. Keep going. You know, if ultimately you've got a sense of belief, a sense of belief that takes you right back to the why you're doing it. That's why it's so critical. It gets tough. It doesn't come easy. You have to believe you can succeed. But if your why at the beginning was strong enough, when you get here, you've got enough faith to carry on. You've got enough faith because your motives are pure. You're doing it for the right reasons, not for money. You're helping people because you love. Your energy is loving and caring and human. And that core energy, well, it doesn't switch off. You can't get to the end so I've got... I don't, want to stop, I don't want to help any more people. If you're just doing it because you help, you just don't stop. And you believe in yourself and keep the faith. And that's really where it comes good at the end. So remember, as I've just said, things always work out right in the end. If they haven't worked out right yet, it's not the end. Keep going. I'll leave you with a couple of quotes. Another favourite of mine. We can't change the winds, but we can adjust the sails. That's a beautiful image. Again, I've got lovely posters for the business booster, which I can help you with if you want some of these on your wall. It was actually Dolly Parton that said that. Fabulous. And one of mine, one of my absolute watchwords with all of my clients I share with you now with love. Think like a leader, not like a labourer. The critical, critical difference in business is if you're thinking always about it's so evident. I ask people how much they spend on themselves. So if you're questioning the cost of what you invest in yourself, thinking's wrong. If you're always looking at the cost of what you spend, your thinking's wrong. You need to have the big picture awareness because a leader looks at getting it done, not just doing it themselves. A leader doesn't shrink back on paying someone to do it if they've done the research to get the right person. If they've done their numbers, they know the results are right. A leader uses the tools to get it done. A labourer says, I haven't got enough time or I can't spend the money or that's not enough money. A leader thinks like <clears throat> differently to a worker. Excuse me. So I'll leave you with those thoughts. Remember always, I'm very grateful to be here serving you. And honestly, 
I would love to help you anytime you want. So please, if you want to contact me, you can be Kench at thebusinessbooster.co.uk and you can find me on LinkedIn, Ben Kench. But I hope you have a lovely day. I'll speak to you again another time. Thank you. Bye for now.